Susan Butler, author of East to Dawn, The Life of Amelia Earhart. Where did you get the title East to Dawn? Uh, the title East to the Dawn was my, actually my husband's contribution to the book. I had a very trendy title, Amelia Earhart, An Extraordinary Woman, and um, we decided it had to be something really much more interesting, and he came up with East to the Dawn, which I thought was brilliant. What's it mean? Well, it means that her major flights were from west to east. And she was uh, on her solo flight uh, across the Atlantic flying into the dawn. She was on her first flight where she was just a passenger from Newfoundland to uh, Europe flying into the dawn. And on her solo flight from uh, Hawaii to California, she was flying into the dawn. And then, of course, on the last flight, where she was lost, she was lost flying into the dawn. When did she live? She was born in 1897, and uh, this is the 100th anniversary of her birth. And when did you get the first idea that you wanted to write this book? Uh, it was in the back of my head for years. I wanted to write a book about a remarkable woman, and she was the most remarkable woman that I knew, and I had a special reason, actually, because my mother was one of the early flyers. So she was kind of always there for me. And where did your mother fly? She flew out of uh, the Red Bank Airport in Red Bank, New Jersey, um, in the 30s. How, how much flying did your mom do? Well, she did a lot. Uh, but this is, she did a lot before the war. Uh, and then in the beginning of the war, uh, before anything got really serious, she uh, was in the Civil Air Patrol and, and uh, patrolled the Jersey coast. Do you fly? No. Did you ever think you wanted to be a flyer? I did. I thought about it, but by the time I was old enough to fly, it was after the war and after the Second World War, and um, I just kind of got on to other things. And I think it says in, your, in the little bio about you that your mother was a member of the 99s? She was a member of the 99s, yes. You say in the back of the book there are now 6,500 members of that? Group? Over 6,500 members. What is it? Uh, it's, it's a women's flying organization. It's, it, it's really the flying organization where uh, all the women join and then they support each other and they have various programs. Uh, Got a picture here I want to show you of uh, two people. Who are these people? Let me see if we can get it here. Who are those people? Whoops. That's Eugene Vidal and Amelia Earhart. And who is Jean Vidal? Eugene Vidal is uh, the father of Gore Vidal. He was uh, the great love of Amelia's life. He was also the head of the Bureau of Air Commerce. So he was the highest civilian, that's the highest civilian post in aviation then. In your book, you uh, quote Gore Vidal. Did you talk to him about this? For this book? I interviewed him, yes, and that he gave me this sensational quote. What was it about? Well, um, it was about my book. He says that he liked the book. But he also gave you some information that she used to wear uh, men's underwear. Yes, she used to wear men's underwear and she didn't, she was too embarrassed to buy it herself. So his father used to buy it. Why? why? Why did she wear men's underwear? Well, it was more comfortable. Women's underwear at that point. Women didn't wear slacks. They didn't wear pants. Uh, and so uh, they wore kind of silk things that uh, didn't work well under pants. So, <laughs> so Jean bought her, I think, jockey briefs that worked out better. Now, at, if we were alive during her most, uh, you know, when she was getting the most attention, what were people saying about her in this country? What kind of publicity, if you can relate it to today, did she get back in the 30s? Um, she w would have been a combination of, of uh, the greatest, like, Gina Yeager. Um, I, I just don't know. There's, if I say that, there probably are people who have never heard of Gina Yeager. She was the most famous woman in America. 
She's probably the most famous woman in, in the world uh, during her lifetime. She uh, was catapulted to fame because she was the first woman to uh, fly the Atlantic when it seemed as if nobody could fly the Atlantic without dropping into the sea. And, uh, and then she went on to uh, become uh, a fine flyer and she spent her life on the lecture circuit in the public eye deliberately. And then she wrote three books. I don't think there's anybody really uh, in our, on our present day scene who could possibly uh, be all the things she was at the time. This uh, cover you have and this photograph of Amelia Hart comes from where? Uh, it's a picture, it's just a, a, a picture of her uh, a, after one of her flights. I'm actually not sure which one. It, it comes from one of the archives. And, and tell us about how big she was, I mean, how tall she was. And, and she was five foot eight. She weighed 118 pounds. She was skinny. Um, she was uh, very good looking, except she had thick ankles. She hated her ankles, uh, according to Gore Vidal. She was obsessed, even when she was famous, with, uh, with her ankles, which is one of the reasons why she always wore pants, because it, it showed off the best of her figure and hid the worst. And she had, she had absolutely beautiful hands, long, tapering fingers uh, that her husband was in love with. How many times was she married? Just once. She, there, were, there were really two great loves in her life. One she married, that was George Palmer Putnam, and one she did, that was Eugene Vidal. George Palmer Putnam was who? George Palmer Putnam was um, uh, a publisher, a very good publisher, and, and a, an extrovert, a, uh, an entrepreneur uh, who was famous in his own right. He was the, he was the uh, publisher who snared uh, Lindbergh, and, which was the greatest publishing coup of, of, of that era and put him on the map. And uh, he also published all the other explorers and adventurers. He was really in love with, with uh, the great outdoors and, and, and adventurers. And when he kind of stumbled onto Amelia Earhart, he was just totally bowled over because she was everything. She was, she, was, uh, she was his dream woman. Where did they meet? Well, they actually met when he interviewed her. Uh, he had been given the job of finding a woman to fly the Atlantic in the place of Amy Guest, who had bought an airplane and planned to fly uh, and be the first woman to fly the Atlantic. And it was her notion that uh, she would uh, uh, take off from the United States, fly to London, land in the Thames in front of the Houses of Parliament, and it was going to be a gesture of friendship between uh, the United States and England. So therefore, she named the plane Friendship. And she was from a very wealthy family, and she was uh, 55, very headstrong, very intelligent, and her, her uh, family didn't know what she was about. She kept it quite quiet. And she had uh, Commander Byrd helping her organize this, and he found her the plane, he found her the pilot, he found her the co-pilot. And then when her family found out about it, they, not too surprisingly, hit the roof. And so they talked her out of it. And so she said, stubborn lady, she said, well, okay, I won't do it, but then it has to be, uh, it has to continue. The project has to continue. Uh, and I want my place taken by an American woman who will be a credit to her sex and a credit to her country. It has to be somebody educated, uh, uh, a flyer, and a wonderful person because there were various uh, people, ver various women who were trying to be that first woman who wanted to uh, be the first woman across the Atlantic because uh, they knew that they'd become the most famous woman in the world if they could just get on a plane. And there was one in particular, one woman.